What's up guys, welcome back, it's Kongboy. In this video, I'll be explaining the top five worst crypto hacks to ever happen. It is estimated that $4 billion was stolen as a result of hacks across the crypto space in 2021, and unfortunately, that number is likely to be much higher in the year 2022. Especially when considering the social engineering scams like phishing emails that steal private keys, and other methods that have gotten a lot more complicated and well thought out. Around 70% of all institutions, even outside of crypto, were victims to some sort of cyber attack. And according to Cybersecurity Ventures, it's projected that cybercrime will grow to cost over $10 trillion by the year 2025. And if it were a country, it would have the third largest economy behind the United States and China. When it comes to blockchains and crypto-based platforms, it truly is the wild west of finance, and anyone has a chance to steal many fortunes worth of wealth with a much better chance of getting away with it as compared to traditional finance. The first hack that I'll be discussing happened to the DAO on Ethereum in 2016. And this DAO was used for crowdfunding investments to launch new projects on the blockchain. And at the time of the hack, they had managed to gather over 250,000 Ethereum tokens. This technically wasn't a hack, but a well-executed exploit on a vulnerable and highly valuable target. This was the first major example of what can go wrong when using smart contracts and why to be very careful. And it clearly laid out the pros and cons of using code as law. The attacker exploited a bug in the contract for redeeming DAO tokens for ETH. And they were able to repeatedly exchange for ETH continuously, even though their balance was insufficient. This resulted in 14% of the entire Ethereum supply to be drained and stolen by this attacker. A vote was proposed and held to decide if they were going to fork the blockchain to reverse the effects of this hack after having fixed the bug in the contract. The Ethereum community, as in the token holders, decided to move forward with the bailout and move to a new chain where the transaction never happened and all funds were returned. The decision was quite controversial and it led to the continuation of the original Ethereum chain with the hack still being recorded in the blockchain, which you may have heard of in Ethereum Classic. The DAO hack on Ethereum is a great demonstration that even though blockchains may be truly decentralized at layer one, there's always a layer zero being the social layer that can decide many things about what to do with the layer one, or in this case, which one to pick. If the majority of participants on a network decide to leave and then join a different version of the chain, then just through that majority migration, the new chain becomes the more legitimate one because social consensus can always override mathematical consensus. Plenty of people believe that this breaks the values of decentralization, and while they're not wrong, and I'm still a big fan of Ethereum myself, this definitely did hurt the reputation and legitimacy of Ethereum to some degree. But I also recognize that the social layer at the end of the day has the final say as to what happens, and therefore systems cannot truly be decentralized, especially as it gets more complicated when compared to Bitcoin, as pretty much all it does is send, receive, 21 million supply, and a few other things. Now I'm not tearing down Bitcoin, but I'm just saying that it being much simpler definitely helps it remain the most decentralized cryptocurrency and blockchain network in existence. This next hack happened to the Poly network in 2021, and Poly is a cross-chain network that is completely different from the Polygon blockchain, though Polygon is still involved since there were funds stolen off of it through Poly, but Polygon has no responsibility in this. This hack of $611 million was the result of an exploit across multiple chains, Polygon, Binance Smart Chain, and Ethereum. The Poly team sent out a tweet asking them to return the funds and even use some intimidation in it. Poly had to shoot their shot and it didn't look like there was any way they were gonna get their funds back, but out of a sheer miracle, the hacker messed up by blowing their chances of being able to successfully launder any of the stolen funds from this hack by accidentally sending the stolen funds to a wallet that was tied to several KYC centralized exchanges. Crypto detectives quickly realized and posted about it on Twitter. And after realizing their mistake, the hacker posted a transaction that said, ready to return the funds. So the hacker was really competent enough to steal $600 million worth of tokens in a brilliant exploit, but couldn't successfully cash in from a simple transaction being sent to the wrong address. In the end, the hacker returned nearly all the stolen funds and on the surface, this seems like a white hat hacker situation, which is a hacker that finds a bug for a relatively small bounty compared to what they could have exploited. But this doesn't seem to be the case, and we have to assume that this attacker would have taken all the funds that they could have laundered all of it. Next up is the Ronin network hack that happened this year in 2022, and it's the new largest crypto hack to date. And this was $624 million and nobody realized for six days, not even the team, it was a concerned user. Ronin is a sidechain to Ethereum, which facilitates faster and cheaper transactions to allow for their play to earn and microtransaction based game Axie Infinity. However, they unfortunately achieved their desired network performance 
through compromising on decentralization and trustlessness for speed and control over the network. They didn't want to rely as much on this complicated coordination between all the nodes in the network because they kept it very small and controlled between nine validators in which only five needed to sign a transaction for it to go through. And these signed transactions make various decisions from the DAO, the game, the bridge, and everything relating to the ecosystem. And for it being the largest and most successful crypto and NFT based video game, this was ripe for the picking and especially with the vulnerabilities that it had. All the attacker had to do was even for just a moment, control five of the nine validators for the network. And that's exactly what they did. They controlled the majority of the validators and were able to sign a transaction that sent 5,000 Ethereum from the bridge to their wallet on Ethereum mainnet and were able to withdraw it to exchanges to sell and cash out. Mt. Gox is one of the earliest major crypto hacks in history and it happened in 2014 as it was the largest Bitcoin exchange in existence. The exchange had 850,000 Bitcoins unaccounted for that went undetected by the public for years. The founder admitted to using loans by leveraging customer funds in order to execute trades and hide the fact that they had lost the majority of their stash of Bitcoin and that they were about to become insolvent. This made up roughly 6% of the entire Bitcoin supply at the time, which then equaled $450 million, but at today's value is nearly $15 billion. This was undoubtedly a catalyst for the Bitcoin crash that happened in 2014. Despite this catastrophe, the Bitcoin network hasn't changed a thing. And the chain that everyone still uses today is the same chain that the hack happened on unlike Ethereum, which compromised its values of decentralization to recover entirely from the hack, at least monetarily and at the expense of its reputation. Another one of the largest crypto hacks to happen in this space was the wormhole exploit this year in 2022. And it lost $320 million when the hacker manipulated the bridge contract to be able to mint 120 wrapped Ethereum tokens on the Solana network. 93,000 of this ETH was sent back to the Ethereum network where it was out of the control of Solana. And the remaining ETH on Solana was traded into USDC and Solana tokens. The wormhole team offered them $10 million for the stolen funds back, as well as to keep them innocent. The specific technical details of how this was pulled off are well beyond me, but it was a bug in the contracts relating to the bridge and it was done hours after a new version of the wormhole bridge contracts were published, which revealed areas of the code that were vulnerable to attacks. This is one of the biggest dangers in using open source code for an application that is responsible for hundreds of millions of dollars and sometimes even billions. It may have been that the attacker was closely monitoring the code for vulnerabilities and then the answer fell right into their lap as someone publicly shared the vulnerability that was soon going to be fixed. So it seems like the attacker was prepared and acted fast. Now, Wormhole managed to replace the liquidity stolen from this bridge, but there was still a massive loss and they are still operating to this day. It's worth mentioning that three of these top five worst crypto hacks happened on cross-chain bridges between blockchain networks. This pretty much proves the point of many critics that have been concerned of the security of bridges between chains, since there's far more areas for vulnerability. And the founder of Ethereum, Vitalik Buterin, expressed his concern of bridge security even long before these major attacks happened. That's all for this video. If you guys enjoyed, hit that thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and I'll catch you later.